All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about one of the most underrated After Effects plugins, I think, ever, and that is Fractal Noise. So I get a lot of questions about how I make overlays, and it's really not that difficult, but I feel like it uses one of the plugins in After Effects that is most underrated. So today we're gonna to be talking about Fractal Noise and exactly how we can use it to make some pretty cool procedurally generated stuff. Okay, so we're in After Effects, new project, kind of already open, uh, new composition, 1920, 1080. Let's make it like two seconds long. So we're gonna start with the new solid. We're gonna make this black and we're gonna drop fractal noise onto it. Sweet. Okay, if we're trying to make abstract kind of gradient colors, fractal noise is great with this kind of stuff because it generates a whole map that we can then apply a color to. So what I like to do is use something like Colorama. Just gets a bunch of random colors. We can uh, mess with the input phase if we like a bit. Maybe we're feeling something kind of reddish purple today. You can layer effects on top of it, and you get this kind of cool, random gradient look. It's definitely useful for a whole bunch of things, especially if you're making like abstract background colors, um, because you can just scale up the fractal noise. And there you go, you got like some kind of warpy gradient in the background. Um, like let's say you have like a text layer and you want to say like, I don't know, I think Apple uses this a lot, so we could write an Apple, Microsoft Sans Serif, like center this. I mean, already you kind of get the look, right? It's that kind of abstract color. Set the track mat to alpha. And now you got a pretty cool like gradient over your text. But the sweet thing about all of this is that no matter what you do, you're not actually rendering anything yet, or you're not actually using any image files. So if you need to tweak something, you can do that. You have the f like flexibility to go back into the fractal noise and change this to max or change this to dynamic or you can mess around the scale a bit if you need a bit more gradient or scale it out if you want a kind of more solid color. Or you can blur it less if you want kind of the more of that fractal look. I'm gonna use some plugins that you won't have in stock After Effects, like Zebrafy, Color. This one's super useful. Um, if you ever watched a Nerd City video, my man loves Zebrafy. He uses it everywhere. But it's super useful for just, once again, getting in those random colors that you'd really want. Um, especially if you're kind of going for something ab like really, really abstract. Um, you can adjust where the phase starts, get some like different colors in there. Um, I'm gonna, I like to use Amino if you're making more glitchy stuff. So Amino Diffusion, I believe the Amino plugin practice is free. You could also, if you wanted to have more abstract art, use a Pixel Sorter. So I'm using Pixel Sorter, After Effects Pixel Sorter 2 here. You can get it off, uh, I believe it's A scripts. But you could like distort it a bit here. Maybe you can turn off the Zebrafy color if you like those colors more. And look at that. I mean like. We've automatically got some abstract art. And if you watch my other tutorial on the AirPods, if we need to distort something and we want to have this like displacing by like some random glitchy value, we can simply drop a displacement map onto our text here. Precompose our black solid, it's says hello, we should make it visible first. So precompose that, set this to black solid comp. And we can displace this, we get some pretty sweet results. So they look kind of glitchy, look kind of weird. You can even turn off the pixel sorting within this. So let's scroll down, turn off pixel sorting. And we're gonna get more like kind of warpy distortion, something like Tyler, CC, actually Reptile, I think is what we want. And repeat the tiles up to the sides, so we're tiling hello. Kind of see what we're getting at. We can put this before the displacement map, which is probably what we should have done before. And like, look at that, that's wacky. And it's something cool, it's kind of like, glitchy and abstract. Hope you enjoyed, hope you found this useful. Um, I feel like a lot of people don't use fractal noise as much as they could. Um, I mean like there's so much stuff you can do with it, but it's not just for like VFX related things. I feel like a lot of people use it for VFX and then they don't use it for like motion design or motion graphics because it doesn't look as clean, but I think the trade-off for that like super clean polished look is you can get a lot of cool gradient, um, generate a lot of cool colors and make a lot of cool glitchy things to kind of contrast that clean look. And I think that looks really cool, works really well, and is a look that a lot of people are striving to get, but they don't know how to do it. So rather than downloading a glitch resource or some glitch overlay off the, off the internet, off Google Images, now you know exactly what to do to hop into After Effects and make your own, and then you can have it fit and tailored towards your project. So I hope you found this useful. Um, if you did, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.